Did you like to draw as a kid? Probably yes. What about drawing or scribbling on walls? I know I did. Our guest, Sue Lin of SLC Scribbles, is an artist based in London. She started her journey writing on her parents' walls and now balancing a career in creativity while keeping a trusty sketchbook wherever she may be. Though her parents weren't too thrilled about art, she pressed on and it progressed and led her to a lot of open doors. Listen as we discuss working with clients and enjoying the process of visualizing and presenting ideas, taking the quote-unquote me time to create through everyday scenes and things from your cupboard, how taking a step back and exploring the different facets of creativity can create impact, drawing and sketching using your personal photos as reference, and get this, mixing yoga with sketching. If you want to be part of the conversation, then send in your questions and topics you want us to cover to hello at etrolab.com. Hey, this is Jesse, and I'm an artist and studio host for Etrolab. We believe in your power to create, so we invited artists from all around the globe to inspire you to keep on creating. So join us in this journey and let's celebrate creativity. This is Make More Art, the podcast. Hey, Sulen, it's really great to have you on the podcast, and I'm just excited to learn more about you. So give us a rundown. How did everything start for you in terms of your creative journey, your IG handle, which I probably would think it's SL would be Sulen, and then there's a C. So can you take us through the, your backstory and your entire creative journey? Well, hi, thanks, Jesse, for inviting me. Uh, really excited to be on. It's the first podcast I've done, so uh, please wow. bear with me if I if I start <laughs> rambling on. You'll have to you'll have to stop me. Um, okay, so uh, gosh, where do I start? I guess the I guess the best place to start is actually from when I started drawing, mm. and that would have been from ever since I could hold a pen. I think so. I've always loved to draw. Uh-huh. Um, ever since I was a very little uh, child I think used to um, steal my parents pens biros and run around the house and scribble on the walls and <laughs> I know it was quite bad I think it got to a point where my mum just she just just stopped telling me off because she couldn't stop couldn't stop me going around drawing <laughs> yeah drawing on the walls um, she just had to leave it leave it be so um, yeah so I think I used to I've always love doing it and I don't remember a time where I I wasn't drawing so Mm. so that's um I guess that's where it started and then I always knew from that and my enjoyment of sketching that um I would progress into a career of art um or or design of some sort so I work as a as a designer trained as a designer okay and um I'm currently working um, as a creative director at a uh, retail and branding consultancy Um, but I still love drawing just because so um, I still love to continue the art yeah Mm -hmm. so I I keep that running on on the on the side as well as you know the creative aspect of my job Mm -hmm. and um, and that's why I started SLC Scribbles I guess so SLC are my initials my my name my full name is Sue Choi. So um, and lots of my friends just call me SL or SLC. So it's, it was a natural, it was a natural thing. That makes to sense do, just to have um, SLC. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm always scribbling away somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so be that at work okay. or, you know, <laughs> at home yeah. doing, doing, doing SLC scribbles. So again, it was, that was quite an easy um, decision on the handle. On the, on, what will be my IG <laughs> handle? That, that's a very easy decision to make, I would say, because yeah. normally people will have a hard time. Like, what am I, what, what, what will it be? What will be my IG handle? But yours does make sense because people are calling you like SL and then yeah. easier. Yeah. So you've always loved drawing. And I was, yeah. yeah, I was looking at how you were telling about you started, you know, at a very young, young age and then you started scribbling on the wall. So the artist has always been in there and I think so mm-hmm. so, I think so would you say that you have you grow up in an environment wherein it's really celebrated and encouraged um not really <laughs> not really um huh. my 
my parents actually weren't too excited about me oh. um, progressing mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. art and design. Um, I, you know, they're obviously fine with it now, but um, I think with very traditional Chinese, so I'm um, Chinese, uh, British born, yeah. a very tr- traditional Chinese background. Um, mm-hmm. You know, my parents didn't think that that was really a job that you could, you know, really make it make a good, decent living or, you know, be able to support yourself with. So yeah, they, they weren't particularly happy about that. But um, I, I, um, I ended up pursuing design um, and actually studied interior design at university. And, mm-hmm. you know, and that progressed into many other things. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you never know it, where it can take you. <laughs> that is true. That is absolutely true. So in your journey, because listening to you, it feels as if it's always been a part, whether at work. I mean, that that was a core sort of still related to it um, in college. Yes. And then now you said that you're a creative director? Yes. Yes. So I work um, for a retail and branding agency mm-hmm. and we design um how do I describe it we design retail spaces commercial Ooh, spaces and nice. that could be anything from yeah lots of hospitality as well so anything from shops to restaurants to hotels um mm-hmm. that kind of thing so it's, it's really exciting it means I get to do a lot of travel get to meet lots of interesting people Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen lots of you know many different cities so that gives me an opportunity to, to draw some of those as well I saw that um, yeah on Instagram yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it's really fun and obviously not a lot of travel with the pandemic at the moment yes. <laughs> um, but yeah it means I get to um, practice of a sort of very different side of my creativity as well yeah. um, so it, it's great to have that kind of balance balance Speaking of balance, how do you really make sure that you have this sort of balance that you still find creativity in everything that you do without feeling, because it, you mm. like what you said, even within your job, it's still somehow related to art. But how do you keep that balance of still doing creativity and still finding joy in doing it, even though it's it's your job? For work, yeah. Yeah. That's a really good question. <laughs> hmm. um, I think... I think part of it is natural in that I will always sort of um, have this kind of natural enthusiasm for it mm-hmm. and see the possibilities. Yeah. And that's that's the kind of exciting bit. It's, you know, what what's the possibility of what we can do for this client right. that's going to make people want to come and see it, can come mm-hmm. and engage with the brand and yeah. be excited by what they hear, um, feel, see and touch. Um, so part of it is that thinking about the possibilities and part of it is the actual process because Love I still it. very much enjoy the design element you know actually mm-hmm. dreaming up ideas getting mm-hmm. it down on paper visualizing it for the client and then actually presenting it and 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 it, and you know and, and trying to make them fall in love with it you know that's yeah. all part of it as well so part of it is that part of it's the possibilities and the imagination and part of it's the actual process of it okay that's a really great way of explaining that how you find a balance within the two, you know, creativity and then doing it for your work. Another question um, that I would like to ask you, um, Sulan, is that how do you stay motivated in, in creating? Because I know I was reading this book about uh, keep going and it's, it, he, Austin Cleon mentioned something, in the lines of the easiest way or the quickest way to hate what you love doing for it to become your job and I know you touched on yeah. that earlier when you talk about balance but yeah I mean admit it or not there will be instances right that you would yes. feel like oh, it's too much pressure or have you ever reached that point and how do you get out of that state and still continue to get motivated to create I think um I think with every job, there's an aspect of it that you can possibly yeah. hate. And I think that's the same for everything. There's no, there's no perfect job. There's always going to be something yeah. that you don't, you don't like to do. <laughs> and, you know, admittedly in my job now, there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, I, I don't always get to do all the lovely creating parts anymore, um, mm-hmm. which is another reason why I sort of set up SLC Scribbles because I really wanted to be able to, to have that, side of me express you know be able to still get very Mm hands-on and creative whenever I wanted to so um, that is probably the bit that I dislike the most about my job in that I don't 
don't get to be as hands-on anymore it's not really not really my role but I do enjoy you know helping other people go through that journey so I enjoy working with the teams to to get to that point and inspiring them to to push things and try different things and and so on and, and guide them in that respect so that's part of it I think um and then yeah and then I guess the motivation you know I'll, I'll often if I have a very stressful day at work I'll either go for a run or I um or I sit down and do a sketch I actually sit down and draw something that's completely not related to the work and just just that process just that sort of um it's quite a how do I put it it's quite a an insular thing you know I'll plug in put or put or I'll put some music on or I'll put I'll put my earphones on and I will just go into my own sort of peaceful zone so I love it two and things that I got calls me down yeah two things that I got from from what you just said um just want to capture is that one is that you help others so in a way you still manage to really you know inject that creativity that in your own role you're sort of I don't want to use the word limited but it's somehow you are yeah, yeah you're helping yeah. others which is really great and then the other one is that you do something totally not related to your work and you are in the zone which yeah. I believe as an artist would be something that we when you start really doing something and you start earning for for doing it sometimes you get into the feeling that I just need to do something totally not related and just be in the zone yeah yeah that's absolutely right and I think even um with I've been um, getting a couple of commissions to do this summer. It's been really exciting. And I think even when I look back over some of the commissions, if there's something that I'm getting a bit stuck on, I'm thinking, gosh, I probably wouldn't have chosen this to draw myself, for example, Mm -hmm. then I'll just go, I'll step away and I'll draw something else. I'll I'll get that kind of energy going again and get that excitement going and then I'll come back to it and I'm, Mm -hmm. and I'm fine. And I kind of, fine I'm getting on a bit of a roll um but yeah I, I think that's always a good way of dealing with that kind of getting stuck you know when you get a moment where you just feel like nothing's going right or you get that creative block that's when I sort of just go hit just pause go. yeah move on to something else uh-huh. come back and then you find that actually that unblocks well like, it does for me anyway <laughs> that is a really good example to for those art because artists block is quite common right but you just yeah. cited the really good example of how to get unblocked whenever you face that roadblock yeah you mentioned earlier that you love to travel you get to travel a lot prior to the pandemic and I saw yeah. a lot of your sketches from different places and I think I saw one from Seville Spain which yes um, yeah you know so on so uh, yeah. you've been doing a lot of traveling and sketching in your travel yeah um it's I I try to so mm. wherever I go I this is why I love a sketchbook <laughs> a pocket sketchbook <laughs> yeah I, love, I love bring sketchbook. it bring a little sketchbook with me a little mm. pen and um try and get some sketching in when whenever we're on holiday or we're going to visit somewhere new um I usually build it in it's quite difficult when you're traveling with other people as long as you don't want to keep stopping everyone. <laughs> everyone stop. I need, I need to sit down and sketch this. So um, I try to build them into kind of natural pause moments. So for example, yeah. if we're already stopping for a, a drink or mm-hmm. lunch um, or, you know, if, if um, everyone's off doing their own thing and I have that little gap and mm-hmm. I usually try and think about it in sort of half hour chunks. So I know if I've got a half hour, break uh-huh. or around half an hour mm-hmm. that's enough for me to to get something going and sort of yeah. settle my mind and and focus um mm-hmm. and it's just lovely sketching on holiday because it becomes part of the memory and you kind of I I feel like I'm collecting these kind of uh these little postcards that I've created myself because oh. um, I usually use a little a6 a6 yeah. sketchbook as a6. well so yeah. Yeah, so it's a, it's sort of almost postcard size, postcard and size. it's just easy enough to keep in in your bag. Um, but yeah, so I do that a lot if I'm away, and then when I'm away for work, it's a little bit more tricky with work because usually you're dashing backwards and forwards, or you're with clients, and yeah. definitely can't say to the client, "Excuse me, I'm just going to stop here and do a <laughs> sorry. sketch." Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm really busy now. Um, so 
uh, what I tend to do when I'm with clients is either if I have time on my own, then I'll yeah. obviously try and get away and do mm-hmm. that. But otherwise, I'm just sort of taking lots of photos. I'm just trying to absorb everything, take lots of photos. And then it's afterwards when I come back that I probably mm-hmm. do captures around that. Yeah. It's based on the um, on the photos. I like to draw from my own photos if I can. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, because I um because if I can't draw on location, and I think the photo is the next best thing that I've been there yeah. and I've taken it in a, a moment that I can um I remember. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember being there and that feeling of um you, you just have that that the presence of of being in that space and you know you you know you would have selected that photo that shot because of the light or because of you know I don't know the traffic the way the traffic was moving or whatever it might be um it feels more personal to me when I'm drawing from my own photos your own photographs are you into photography as well or not really I wish I was actually um I'm Mm -hmm. always so envious um of these amazing photographers um I, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in it, but I'm mm-hmm. definitely uh, what um, you know. You couldn't, you couldn't call me an enthusiast. Um, I love taking enthusiast. photos, but I, enthusiast would be a good not really. Thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty amateur. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the point that you made about capturing a photo from your own perspective, and you talk about yeah. the light and how basically the, that moment that you just want to capture, whether it's traffic, it yeah, traffic, or it could be people, right? Just yes, yeah. By. And yeah. so you are, even though it's a photograph that you, but you captured it. So you know exactly the, the moment. Yeah. Right? You can sort of channel yourself back to when you look at, I mean, you would do the same, you know, you yeah. look at a photo and you go, God, I remember that. Remember, remember being there with so-and-so sure. and we did this and we ate yeah. this. And I think all those memories, you know, just come back instantly. And that helps me feel like I'm there, helps mm-hmm. me feel like I'm in that space and that I can, capture the thing I can recapture what it was um, because I can feel it when it coming back through the photo yeah I also want to touch on you said that you care there it's an a6 sketchbook that you carry yes, yeah. and yeah. I was just reminded that this is postcard size so I I'm compelled to ask this question have you have you ever sent any of your works to like a friend or a family member uh, no that's that? I haven't <laughs> I haven't um I, I do know uh, a few friends that do that and I'm always like they, they always look so beautiful as well because they've got such yeah. beautiful um typographic styles um and and I don't really I, I just I just sketch but um mm-hmm. I'm, I'm also and ever since I was very little I think I'm just quite particular I just don't like ripping pages out of my sketchbook I like to Ooh, okay. I okay like to keep it intact so okay and, and so now I haven't <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because I know I know a friend who does um, sketching as well, and she did that whenever she traveled. Yeah. So and it's so beautiful. Yes. And for someone that's a lovely thing to receive. It's it's a lovely gesture to be able to receive. It, that's a really good idea. Maybe I should get a different a sketchbook. That's not. I usually use a ring bound one um, oh. because I like to put my pen in it. Yeah. So yeah. I always have a little ring bound thing um, right next to me here, <laughs> <laughs> and it's always got you know an elastic oh. band and a, and a pen around it so I don't like to rip it out but I could get a different one that's a good idea that's not ring band <laughs> and I can just those are once, ones I could send off once we're all ready to travel I'm sure some yeah. of them will be very much interested or psyched to get one of your yeah. works postcard size yeah that's a good idea I'm gonna I'm yeah. going to do that so I also saw Sulin um in in some of your highlights during the lockdown that you all since you can't travel and all so yeah. you changed your subject quite a bit with your yeah. editing from your pantry. Can <laughs> you could tell us more about that? Yeah, um, I used to do that a lot when I was a, a kid. I used to, I spent years just drawing, you know, my mum's kitchen cupboard <laughs> oh. and things inside it. And yeah. um, and I, I did a lot of still life drawing, um, you know, when I was in at school, so mm-hmm. a, a lot younger. Yeah. Um, so it's kind I, I get a, I guess I guess it's not that big a change for me and in, in my mind it's still something that I do it's yeah. not something that I'm I guess SLC Scribbles focuses on <laughs> um, and that's predominantly because um, I guess as I moved through my career and started creating spaces and mm-hmm. more sort of environmental things my yeah. interests sort of shifted to mm-hmm. more architectural 
Um, so yes, yeah, so, so at the moment, I mean, predominantly it's, it's architectural and urban sketching. Urban sketching. And I like, I love cityscapes because I'm a city girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I just like, I just like all the clutter and the, the crazy, this, because uh -huh. I think it brings it to life. It brings as this energy that you, you don't, you don't get in, in, um, in other scenes. I love, I love all the, uh, the lamp posts and the, you know, yeah. the random bins you might get on the street. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of still, off, I mean, I still enjoy it. I still do it, um, but not as often. Yeah. Not as often. Okay. Not as often. What I do enjoy about it is the fact that I can, even if I'm stuck at home um, and <laughs> during lockdown, for example, I can still draw from life. So I can still make an observational study and yeah. practice that type of drawing because I think it's important to keep that up. Um, always drawing from photos, you lose that you lose the knack of being able to translate a real three-dimensional object or space mm -hmm. that spatial awareness um, yeah. is not the same mm -hmm. so practicing observational drawing is still really really important and I try and get as much of that in as I can that is that is great uh, to hear Zulan and I'm I'm also interested to know because for some artists it's, it's it depends right they have their own routines and like before they sketch, they have, you know, I need to prepare something, I need to be, yeah. you know. Do you also have that? Do you all, do you follow a certain uh, routine uh, before you sketch or is it very random? That you, not really. I have my sketchbook. Yeah, it, it can be quite random. Um, mm -hmm. Some days, I guess I can just get up and be able to go or, or do some a sketching sketch. and just yeah. sort of sit down and sketch. Um, other days I just, it needs to be a bit later on in a day where I feel like I've, I don't know, warmed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but usually, usually I find that I am better after I've warmed up a bit. So even if I'm starting first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. I'll probably start with something quite simple. Uh, I'll probably do um, mm -hmm. some brick filling if I'm drawing some <laughs> detailed drawing. Yeah. Um, you know, I won't go for the really complicated things first off because like, you, you always need to warm up your hands. You yes. Do hand exercises and get your lines, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the weight and the way you make your marks, get, get that going. Um, with a sketchbook, I think I'm always on the lookout. So especially if, if I'm out and about and I know I want to stop to do some sketching at some point during the day, uh -huh. I'm always on the lookout for uh, little vignettes that I can sketch so I guess that's already my brain sort of engaging with that yeah. and so so yeah so sometimes it can be a bit random I can just go right well, I'm going to stop in the street corner and, and then draw just something draw yeah something. I have to find it. somewhere where I'm not going to get mowed down by people so I'm usually <laughs> yeah. looking around for a little a, you know a corner or a doorway I can yeah well you can really like DM yeah. The sketch. yeah so you mentioned that you're more of like cityscapes are, are these are the subjects that you're more drawn to? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's because I predominant, I, I mean, I don't know whether this is true. I mean, in my mind, I think it's because, also because I work predominantly in black and white. So it's predominantly yeah. pen. Uh -huh. And so if I'm at the seaside and I'm trying to capture a seascape, you don't really, you can't really conjure that up without a lot of color. Yeah. And so I tend to, um, yeah, I tend not to, to do a lot of um, sort of sea or um, and like country landscapes and things mm. like that. But I'm definitely more interested in, I love drawing windows. <laughs> I think it's, I, it's <laughs> that's something really that strange. I theme that I've seen on your end. Your oh, no. <laughs> I'm drawn to things, I, and I don't know why. I'm just drawn to things with a lot of windows a lot of I think I like the sense of repetition I haven't really digested I dissected this myself so I think I, I do I definitely like things with a lot of repetition I think um pattern I mean I just find that interesting uh -huh. in in everything actually in uh -huh. pattern and so on I, I love that sense of repetition and symmetry um mm -hmm. and I also like looking for scenes that um have lots of layers so in oh. in London and especially in central London you know you get all the lovely, beautiful old architecture mm. against the backdrop of, sort of um, new um, sk skyscrapers, and then yeah. probably a lot of cranes because a lot <laughs> there's of always a lot of building <laughs> going on. So you yeah. get all these little layers of things happening, and I I find that really interesting because of the contrast. So, mm -hmm. um, so contrasting things are really always I always find really interesting. And then anything that's got 
any scene that's got um, um, deep contrast. So this is why it's so great going to hol holidaying in hot places or visiting hot places, because you get that amazing sharp um you know really deep contrast of light mm. and dark with the sunshine which you don't always get in england because we don't get that much sun oh, yeah. um but um yeah and that's another reason why i love um sort of traveling and sort of getting those capturing those scenes where you can really see that sharp contrast um, mm -hmm. that's another one of my favorites i'm i'm curious to know as well Suvan, because i think i saw one of your works for venice well, oh yes bed. yeah and it has colors so i just want to yeah. ask because most of the works here like your recent ones and you mentioned this earlier yeah black and white like just ink yeah have you ever tried other mediums like watercolor or acrylic yeah. or yeah i have yeah um i mean the the black and white thing i i is still my it's like go -to. you know the main mm -hmm. yeah my yeah. go-to and it's just so easy because all I need to do is, is pop out with that, you know? So I, I do, you know, find the ease of it. And it's always, it's also not particularly mm. messy. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not the same as having to you know, get pots of water and <laughs> all this. you don't, you don't get mucky hands when you're out and about, you know, true. you can go back. To, so, cause I'll mm. often pop out in my, mm. when, we were, when pre pandemic, I'll pop out at lunchtime and I will do a quick, 30 minute sketch and I have to pop back into the office and carry on working again so I don't really want to be doing something that's very slow to set up and very complicated but in terms of um, other medium yeah I'm, I used to use um, color pen coloring color pencils a lot mm. so that's why I've sort of I, I suddenly realized oh, I haven't really done that for so many years now and I wanted to try it again and that's why um, that's why I started doing the, the Venice piece in it um, and I'm trying some little bits um, on the side at the moment, but uh, yeah, I, I used to I used to love color pencils. I also used to do a lot of um, you know acrylic paint painting, oh. uh -huh. um, and um, and I haven't tried that in a long time. So I might mm. might go back to that. Like <laughs> no, I go back. I used to love I used to love painting a lot. It's just that. I haven't really got the setup at the moment to do it and, mm -hmm. and it, is, it is quite messy it's not the sort of thing you can pack up and, and go I'll come back yeah. to that later you have to you know you have to leave it there <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, and then watercolors yeah I'm I've been I'm really I I don't consider myself a very expert in this at all but I have actually got all my watercolor stuff set up at the moment you know I'm actually, oh swatches <laughs> um, yeah I'm actually trying out so I've got I got um I got a lovely present of, of um, paints oh, and yes. so on that one and is good. bits yeah. and pieces and I actually received this lovely my little oh, yeah brushes. the brushes from Etcher yeah yeah which is very excited about so yeah. I'm, I'm actually set up at the moment to, to test them out just after this after this definitely uh, looking forward to trying them out <laughs> and yeah I'm also curious to know what's your because I, I kind of noticed on your sketchbook you have a pen right and I think it's Muji oh mistaken, yes yes that one yeah that one is yeah yeah, I have one of those as well, but it's like you use just the, the regular pen. Yeah, I, I do often. Um, I mean, I do have lots of other pens and um, uh, I, I do use those depending on what I'm doing. Uh -huh. um, I just find that I really like the hard nib of these and I just find that it's quite easy to use um, when I'm out and about. Um, so that tends to be the thing that you see a lot on Instagram. Yeah. And then um, I guess... I mean, from my point of view, I just, I think I, because I used to, you know, draw with a biro when I was a kid. So, and I've seen some amazing biro art, you know, over the years that other people have done. And, and it's just kind of, I mean, my feeling is always, it's really lovely to have some of these um, sort of more professional things to, to, to use and try, yes, but true. there's no reason why you can't start with very um, just uh, ordinary yeah. ordinary materials ordinary. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know you there's no excuse really there's there's always something you, you can, can pick up and draw create. on yeah with literally <laughs> anything that you have yeah anything that you have any sort of scrap scrap bit of paper don't draw on your parents walls though people <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be one major takeaway especially if you have yeah don't do, do that don't do that do not do not do that I remember one time as a kid drawing on um drawing on a pair of flip-flops <laughs> drawing on my mom's flip-flops and then also I, I did get very badly told off this um 
painting painting on the furniture painting on the Ooh. chairs don't do that that's Whilst gonna my hurt. Mom was asleep <laughs> don't do that <laughs> take it from soon <laughs> do not do not paint on your furniture and do not draw um one other thing that i also saw was the creative meditation has something to do with yoga yeah Can you tell us um, a little bit more about that please okay yeah that's um That's uh, that's something we started over the lockdown period. So one of my very good friends, um, and we used to, we used to work together actually. Uh-huh. Um, she so she's a designer, but she went off and trained as a yoga instructor. And um, and we thought she, I was running a weekly sort of sketch along classes during lock um, actually bef- before lockdown, but during lockdown it became a virtual thing. And I would invite her to come come along to these sessions, and she said, "I oh, wouldn't it be great if we did a did a yoga version." So I was like, "Yeah, this is a really good idea." So, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, so we we partnered up and um, ran a, a few sessions where she would be doing yoga poses, and we would be drawing them from from the screen. Wow. Um, so essentially, a kind of uh, life drawing class, but with yoga poses, and, we, and she would talk through the poses, and and we would try and um, align them with some of the things that we can do. You know, as all of us are sort of quite sedentary mm-hmm. people at our desks, or yeah. you know, even when you're sketching, you're sitting down for quite a long time, or you're in the same position for a long time, be it standing mm-hmm. or sitting. And just building in some of the nice little exercise you can do to stretch and make sure that you're ready for your sketch to start in the morning, for example. And cool. um, yeah, so it was it was quite nice. It was um it was sort of mentally meditative, but also you know quite f- physically there were things you could learn and take away yeah. from both yoga and sketching. That so is, that, that, I mean, that, was that is really so cool because I know people do the sip and paint. Like it's gonna be like a wine yes. session, and yeah. I've had I've attended one <laughs> yes, of those. Yes, I've been to some of those. <laughs> yeah, I've been to some of those during lockdown. I have a friend who's also based in in London, and um, okay. we did that. She's also, she's also an artist, but the yoga and sketching that is very new to me. And when I saw that on your Instagram, I was like, "We gotta talk about this. This is so cool." <laughs> and I love the the idea because it's with yoga, it's all about you know meditation, and then stretching so it's very yeah. calming and then yeah. when you pair it with sketching it's like double whammy of it like yeah it is isn't it and they're kind of different types of meditating aren't they so yes. for, for me I I do do yoga but not quite not often enough <laughs> I really should be doing it more <laughs> uh-huh. and um so for me my meditating is definitely that is the sketching is sketching. Sort of, like I said getting into that zone but also running I do that as well and two very different one very active one very yeah. sort of quiet and sedentary so um, I keep those both running at this in parallel, in parallel. <laughs> But, um, I love that you you thought of it and it it, it was birthed out of the well the pandemic the lockdown. yeah definitely it was yeah and um, you created something that's so beautiful I mean yoga oh, thank of you. course a lot of people are, are, are doing that I mean for, for meditation yeah. for, for stretching yeah. and all for form posture and then sketching but when you merge marry those two, those two together it's like a different art form all together which is yeah I, I can't take all the credit because obviously Liz um our amazing yo- yoga yogi is <laughs> <Yogi, laughs> um, yeah. part of that so um but yeah I mean we were hoping to do some in person as well yeah, so that we can great. actually run life drawing classes mm-hmm. um if you know together we'll, we'll wait and see we'll see what happens with the pandemic <laughs> yeah we, we, we will definitely see I'm really enjoying <laughs> this conversation with you Sulin and I'm excited for the workshop that you're going to be doing with us uh, about I'm, I, I am 100% sure it's about sketching and um, this is happening in August right it is yes it is August 8th is it August the 8th yes 8th, August 8th and uh, uh, I just had to check that to make sure yeah, I hadn't given to, the wrong date <laughs> <laughs> we have to be sure right now the right day. Definitely August the 8th. August 8th. Okay, so definitely watch out for that. It just kind of reminded me that art is really everywhere. It, I mean, inspiration is everywhere. So if, if there are like takeaways or I call it golden nuggets that you can share with our audience from the journey that you've had as a kid drawing on your parents' walls and then incorporating it in your job right now and 
doing this um, yoga and meditation and sketching at the yeah. same time. Can you take us to what you've learned so far all these years and any nuggets that you can share with our audience, listeners? Um, uh, I guess a couple of things. I guess the first thing is never stop looking. Um, always, always just looking at, at anything. And like you say, because inspiration can come from anywhere. Yeah. So it could be from a movie that you're watching, you know, amazing colors and the um, sets, for example, the way it's put together. It could be from a piece of music. It could be um, from um, a pattern you've, you've seen somewhere on a floor. And so for me, it's always never stop looking. And I think, you know, that's a big part of how I draw anyway, because um, a lot of it is either whether I'm out drawing on location or whether I'm drawing up a photo, the observational part is really important, making sure that you're always looking and not assuming that you know what's there, looking even if you know that subject really, really well. So I guess that that's the first thing, you never stop looking, um, mm -hmm. never stop, you know, sort of being curious. And then I guess the second thing is just um, keep keep practice, practicing. You, you know, you never know where it will take you. And, and practice doesn't necessarily make perfect, but it does make different things. And yes. I think that's the ongoing journey, isn't it? It's always sure. practice, practice, practice. It's not mm -hmm. necessary to get to a, an end goal. It's to, it's to, to keep developing. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. then it's been a pleasure having you on make more art and I had fun chatting with you and learning about all Thank these things. You. It's just amazing how someone can be doing creative works ever since she was a kid, like what you did, drawing on your parents' walls and now incorporating it in your job and still finding that balance. I think that's very key and you gave us some really good examples and lessons and how you can keep, make sure to keep that balance. And I love the that, you know, that you created this activity for others to enjoy both yoga and sketching which is absolutely great um, we're looking forward to learning from you on your workshop and seeing more of your works on the gram i know you have a very engaged community which is great and um, thank you again for being on make more art and for chatting with me it's been a pleasure and i learned so much from our chat please stay safe and take care we'll talk to you again soon thank you so much jesse thanks for having me on that was an interesting conversation with Sulin, and I was kind of reminded of the days when I used to scribble on my parents' wall. How about you? Do you have any stories similar to that growing up? How has that shaped the way you see art? Well, here at Make More Art, we are interested to hear your stories. Share them with us through the blog post associated with this podcast at etrolab.com slash Sulin. That's etrolab.com slash S-I-U-L-A-N. We would love to hear your thoughts, so please drop us a five-star review on the Apple Podcast where you can find us on YouTube at Etro Studio. And, oh, hitting the subscribe button is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you again next time. Until then, let's make more art.